Hi, I'm Paweł Spychalski and do you know that there is one thing that you should do with your TX16S, T18 or any other radio that uses the multi-protocol module but you never really did? Yes, if you want to get the maximum range of any of those radios or you are facing the limited range, you are having any range problems, you're getting signal low or telemetry lost uh, messages all the time, there is something that you can do, might help and actually I don't know why it's not really like put on with the big letters on the front of the manual of the radio and it's called the frequency tuning. Probably the main rule of every radio communication is that the transmitter and the receiver are really using the same frequency and when they are thinking that they are transmitting or listening to the given frequency, they are really doing that. In theory, when you got the radio chipset and you just plug it in and connect the external oscillator, in theory it should be fine. However, there are different uh, oscillators, there are different frequency generators, every hardware has some... The, the, the margin of really of doing exactly what the thing it should be doing and as a result if you just assemble the transmitter or the receiver there might be some kind of the frequency offset and when the transmitter thinks that it's transmitting on a given frequency but in practice it's using slightly different frequency when the receiver tries to listen to this frequency well it's not really listening to the correct frequency and as the result we might have the problems with the limited range the broken transmission telemetry lost signal low all the kind of the problems although in theory it should be working when you are buying the receivers and the transmitter from the well-known manufacturers like let's say Eversky, Futaba or, or Spectrum, you kinda might expect that both the transmitter and the receiver during the production process were really calibrated, they were tuned and when the transmitter thinks that it's using the 2 GHz, 432 MHz frequency, it's really doing that. However, when you are buying the hardware that let's say um, how to say it, it's relatively cheaper and not really well known to have the best quality ever, there might be a frequency offset. This offset, like I mentioned before, might result in the reduced reliability of the link and the reduced range and all kinds of the problems. Let's be honest, the multi-protocol modules in the TX16 or T18 are not really like the most, you know, the most expensive and the best quality hardware you can get. Luckily, luckily the multi-protocol project allows you to manually tune the frequency to match the receiver. Because usually we are, after all, using the uh, better receivers. The, the, for example, Eversky receivers only use the cheaper transmitter, so it's possible to have a relatively simple procedure of how to tune the transmitter to really match what should be this, this, this thing should be tuned during the production process. Like I mentioned, the process is there, it's relatively simple and now I will show you how to do it and after you do it, you are done. All you have to do is then after tuning for the one proven receiver, you will only have to copy the frequency tune to all the other receivers, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, like Sky, for example, or tune for every receiver separately, but this is really not needed. Tune for one good receiver and then copy paste to all the others. So let me change the camera angle and let's let me show you how to do it. To fine tune the frequency in the multi-protocol module, you will of course need the radio with the protocol module. It does not matter if this is internal or external multi-protocol module and a receiver that it's bind to the radio and Really, it's recommended to have the receiver directly from Eversky or Futaba or let's say good quality receiver. Bear in mind, this is you might only have to do it for the one good quality receiver and then just copy paste for all the other receivers. So, how to do it? 
I will not show you how to bind because this is let's say kinda obvious procedure. The receiver has to be on. And now let's go to the module menu and inside of the module menu in the multi protocol setup let's do first of all let's install let's run the low power mode so that the transmitter is transmitting with the lowest possible frequency and then all you have to do oh i will and we we're gonna use some kind of the piece of paper to note some things because we're gonna need it and then we're gonna go into the rf frequency fine tune and we're gonna find the place when you go below zero with the frequency tune when the radio starts to lose the signal the rssi goes very low and uh, in general it just well less dies and repeat the same for the when you go above zero with the fine frequency tune so uh, let's start scrolling and let's observe the rssi over here at one point there is small delay though at one point it should start to go down and not yet not yet oh it's only 79 less than before even less 50 okay minus 79 is one is the lower lower boundary of our frequency range so let's note the minus 71 minus 71 in the notebook so you know you remember it's minus 71 and now let's repeat the process with the values above zero okay at 40 it's still nice rssi without any changes at 45 it's still fine 48 50 okay we are starting to go low 50 51 and at 51 we are almost out of the reception the rssi at 51 is zero so let's note 51 as the second value and now we can take the transmitter out and what we have to do is we have to what compute the average of those two numbers so what's the average of minus 79 and uh, 51 it's well let's say simple stuff minus 79 plus 51 equals minus 28 and now divided by 2 minus 14 so the center frequency of our band is minus 14 so that means that the frequency uh, in that the transmitter generates it's shifted around 14 we are not sure about the unit however by 14 comparing to what the receiver which was calibrated at the factory expects to see so uh, what we really have to do is put the fine frequency tune at minus 40 disable the low power modes and they're done. That's all. This is really all you really have to do. And now when you will have the, another receiver connected to this very same multi-protocol module, all you have to do is put minus 14 on this one. However, the minus 14 might not be correct for a different multi-protocol module or a different radio. This is only for this given transmitter, not the receiver. So you can copy between the receivers, but cannot copy between the transmitters. And that's all. And the question final is, um, how much does it change? It depends. It really depends of how well the module was, let's say, matching the expectation of the frequency. If the difference between the default zero and the actual uh, fine frequency tune is low, then you will probably not really see much of the improvement in the range and the quality of the signal. However, if the zero is actually quite off of the default value, then yes, you might get a nice range boost. How much? really hard to guess because when we are talking about the range of the radio system it's not really that simple okay um that's all for today until the next one bye bye